The third video on second order responses considers overdamp systems and Laplace techniques. So a reminder then of the context, we're looking at uh, differential equations of this form, a d2x dt squared plus b dx dt plus cx equals f, and we're asking ourselves how we might solve this using Laplace transform methods, assuming zero initial conditions. This particular video is looking at systems where both of the poles are real, so we're not dealing with sinusoids quite yet. We will assume that students are familiar with Laplace methods and how to do inverse Laplace, and if you're not, I might suggest that you go and look at some of those videos first. So, a quick sketch about how you go about this. So first of all, we're going to take Laplace transforms of both sides of the equation. You can see there I've put the capital L across both sides. So Laplace of a d2x dt squared plus b dx dt plus cx equals Laplace of f. And in this video we're going to assume that f of t is a constant of 1. So the Laplace transform of a derivative in essence means multiply by s when you're ignoring initial conditions. So we get x of s, the Laplace transform of x of t, times a s squared, that's for the double derivative, plus b s for the single derivative, plus c, which was for the cx, and that equals f of s, and f of s is going to be 1 over s. If I rearrange that in a standard form to get x on its own, you end up with this x of s equals 1 over a squared plus b s plus c times f of s, or if I'm going to use some, some brackets here so you can see this red brackets corresponds to something people often call g of s. So I've got g of s times f of s, and we know what f of s is, it's 1 over s, so we get g of s over s. Now, just a reminder, if you're not familiar with inverse Laplace methods, you might want to go and look at those videos, because this video will go through it relatively rapidly. So here we go. We've got our transform, which represents x of s. That's a reminder of what we had on the previous page. 1 over a s squared plus b s plus c times s. The first thing to do is to factorise this denominator. Now, you'll remember that we've assumed the roots or the poles are real. So I can write this as shown here, a times s plus p1 times s plus p2 times s. And you'll notice I've taken the a outside because I want to write the factors as s plus something. And so that was the easiest way to do it. Now, if I move to partial fractions, again, this is standard. I can then rewrite this whole transfer of, uh, Laplace transform as capital A of s plus p1 plus capital B over S plus P2, plus capital C over S. And having done that, I can use tables, or standard inverse Laplace, to write that X of T equals capital A e to the minus P1T, plus capital B e to the minus P2T, plus capital C. Now, how are we going to go about identifying these unknown coefficients A, B, and C? Now, I'm going to suggest here that we use the cover-up rule to identify those coefficients. You can use other techniques should you wish to. Now again a reminder we've ignored initial conditions um, when we took Laplace of the derivatives. If you wanted to include initial conditions they would change the numerator somewhat but that's beyond the scope of this video. An example then. So I've got x double dot plus 3x dot plus 2x equals 1. So first of all when I take Laplace transforms um, and therefore solve for the Laplace transform of x of s, this is what I get. x of s equals 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 2 times s. Next, I need to find the poles and put this into partial fraction form. So solving for the poles, if I solve p squared plus 3p plus 2 equals 0, I get poles at minus 1 and minus 2. And therefore, the polynomial is clearly factorised as s plus 1 times s plus 2. So I've got x of s equals 1 over s plus 1 times s plus 2 times s. And when I put this into partial fractions, I get this. Capital A of s plus 1 plus capital B of s plus 2 plus capital C over s. So what remains is to find these unknown residues 
capital A, B and C. So I've rewritten here what I had on the previous slide. There's my X of S written in partial fraction form and I'm going to suggest we use the cover-up rule to find these residues A, B and C. Now in the cover-up rule you remember if I want for example capital A then I cover up the S plus 1 term in the left hand side expression for X of S and set S equal to minus 1. So if I'm, I'm looking at this Laplace transform here remember this thing I'm circling so you cover up the S plus 1 and with what you've got left you set S equal to minus 1. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get 1 over minus 1 plus 2 into minus 1 which gives me minus 1. So capital A will be minus 1. If I do the B I've got to cover up the S plus 2 term and set S equal to minus 2. So I'm going to get 1 over minus 2 plus 1 into minus 2 which is going to give me a half. And finally, I've not put it here, if I want to look at the C, I've got to cover up the S term and set S equal to 0. So I'll end up with a half. So what have we got left here? We've got left with a half plus 0.5 over s plus 2 minus 1 over s plus 1. And then I can use the lookup table and inverse Laplace for the remainder of the steps. Here's another example then. I've got x double dot plus 8x dot plus 12x equals 3. So if I take Laplace of x double dot plus 8x dot plus 12x then what I get is s squared plus 8s plus 12 into x of s. Remember ignoring initial conditions. So in other words if I take Laplace of the right hand side as well as being 3 over s I'm going to get x of s equals 3 over s into s squared plus 8s plus 12. Now I can factorize this by inspection it may take you a little bit longer but I can see I've got factors s, s plus 6 and s plus 2. So the next step is going to be to write this out in partial fractions so x of s is going to be something over s plus something over s plus 6 plus something over s plus 2. Now if I use the cover-up rule in order to find a and if I put a little balloon down here to find a I'm going to set s equal to 0 and cross the s from x of s so when I do that I'm going to get 3 over 2 times 6 which is going to be 1 over 4. In order to get, I'll do a different colour so we don't get mixed up, in order to do B, and I'll do my little balloon, I'm going to set S equal to minus 6 and I'm going to cover up the S plus 6. So I'm going to get 3 over minus 6 times minus 6 plus 2 which is going to give me, there's two minuses there, so it's going to give me 3 over 24. And finally, if we look at C, then in order to do C, I'm going to have to set S equal to minus 2 and cover up the S plus 2. So I'm going to get 3 over minus 2 into minus 2 plus 6, which is minus 3 over 8. Then clearly I can put these constants back into the x of s and go straight to the lookup table to find the corresponding time domain signal. Now this slide has got a few examples for you to try by yourself. I'm just talking long enough for you to press pause and see what's going on and then 
I will move to the next slide, which has got a few hints on how to start this. So here's some hints. The hints really are just showing you where the poles are. Um, so how you're going to rearrange the uh, Laplace transform for x of s to show where the poles are before you go to the partial fraction form. Now, just a quick finish and aside, if you have lots of first order systems arranged in series, as I have here, so I can now write g1, for example, here is going to be 2 over s plus 4 and g2 is going to be 1 over s plus 1 and g3 is going to be 4 over s plus 3 what you will find if you want to find the transfer function let's say between z and u then you're going to have z equals g1 times g2 times u and what do you notice you're multiplying together two transfer functions both with real poles you will still have real poles so the key point of this slide is to say when you've got systems in series and those systems have real poles the corresponding system for the everything together will still have real poles so it will be overdamped so generally speaking systems in series have overdamped type characteristics conclusion it's straightforward to use inverse Laplace to determine the step response of second order systems with real poles. You write the output signal as a Laplace transform and then use standard inverse Laplace methods such as the cover-up rule to get back to the time domain. Now you might, if you're very motivated, like to compare the results of this video with videos 1 and 2 which did things in the time domain and check that you get the same solution. <laughs>